take it. a baseline this is what it does on concrete with the stock battery <laughs> we're reading at 19.5 volts here's the concrete test oh that thing is way faster now here's a quick rundown of the extra wiring that we're going to be adding so if you buy the kit of connectors that i recommend you're going to pull two of the flat spades we're going to put that on one end each of the wire that remember cut a little bit extra so you have flexibility on where to put the 18 volt battery or whatever you choose to use so two of these ends will have the spades the other two we're going to strip about an inch of copper wire so that we can military splice into the existing wiring of the hot wheel this tool is fantastic i'm going to show you why it just makes for super quick work of stripping wire and then of course you want to give it a little twist put these connectors on the end make sure that there's no loose fittings and uh, just give them a pinch just like that and then you can always wrap some tape or you know put a heat shrink around it but that's gonna hold for our purposes all right so like I said we're gonna do about an inch over here something like that Something like that and now with the military splice you want these to be separated into two strands because we're going to pigtail it one way and then the opposite way to create a really tight connection. Um, this connection is not going to see a lot of stress so we'll poke that through the opening that we cut in the main harness. You'll see that momentarily. Um, this isn't going to see a lot of stress so I'm not worried about it falling apart or if it does it's easy to work on. But tie you two pigtails kind of closely together because they're going to need to go through the same hole. Perfect. All of these tools that I use are fantastic to have in the garage. I've got lineman pliers, wire crimpers, slash strippers, and then this really nice stripping tool that you see featured. Um, I'm going to list all of these, including the connectors, in the description. I'd appreciate it if you guys buy through those Amazon links. It does help to support the channel. So in this Hot Wheels, this is a something from China, but it's a Toyota Tacoma slash 4Runner. Um, what we're gonna do is carefully use a razor blade and I skin these wires back and use your thumbnail or a toothpick or something to create a hole in the middle. And that's where we're gonna feed those two pig ties that we talked about earlier, red to red, white to white, feed the pigtail through that hole, wrap one strand this way and wrap one strand that way and I'll show you the end result. That's gonna create what's known as a military splice and we're gonna tape it up. So the proper way to do this would likely be to put some solder on. Again, I don't care about that today. I'm just gonna tape it and I'll know if it ever comes off. Now, it's worth noting that this allows us to continue to use the stock battery. Our stock battery is still good. This is just a fun weekend project. I'm going to end up putting a resistor on this to get the 18 volts down to 12 or whatever the max that these motors will take without burning up. But I did want to show you that, you know, the stock battery can still be used and you can swap in the 18 volt for a fun day. Please do this at your own risk. It'll probably burn the motors up. We're just doing it for testing and because we think it's cool. These little motors are pretty cheap anyway. Like if we need to upgrade those, there's some websites that make ones that can take higher power. So we may do that as my son gets older. Just do the black on your own. I don't want to waste your time. You know what you're doing now. All right, so we've got it buttoned up. I've got it back on charge, as you can see, because we want this battery to be at full capacity before we do our stock testing. And I've taped up our new aftermarket leads isolated away from each other into the corner so that we don't you know spark anything or have an open positive just hanging out near bare metal all right let's let it charge i'm going to tape the draggy right here we're going to do a 60 foot test and then we'll hook up the 18 volt and do another 60 foot test and i'm going to make my son clean this thing up because it's really dirty don't mind that <laughs> 
All right, guys, Draggy's on. We've got our foam for the testing reset. Everything should be good. The car is reading at 13.15 volts. And I've got the speed on the remote set all the way up. Let's give it a rip. I don't know how long it's going to take to get to 60 foot, but we're about to find out. And I'm going to be trying to drive and record at the same time and stay on this racetrack line, i.e. my grass. Lego. It's harder than it looks, but I'll be counting the seconds to the 60 foot insane race, lightning fast speeds. It's going two miles an hour, by the way. All right, let's check it. So I've taped up our stock ends and I've hooked the open tabbed prongs there into the Milwaukee 18 volt. Here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> We're reading at 19.5 volts. Here's the concrete test. Oh, that thing is way faster now. Didn't do a burnout though. All right, this actually seems drivable for my son. Nice. So Draggy's connected. It's ready. We're gonna reset it. Oh, it's getting satellite data. Let it get that reset. Screen recording, you guys should see that now. Same test, really hard to drive, so bear with me. That was pretty much the same course. We'll put those comparisons up now. With this thing having two motors, it drives super even, even in tall four and a half inch grass. It puts the power down to both wheels and seems very safe, you know, in comparison to only having a motor on one wheel and trying to send a kid sideways. So, hope you like the video, guys. Let me know if you wanna see more of this content and uh, we'll get a quick video of Connor riding this thing around. Take care.